Here's Brody Brazil. Well, if you look at the Oakland A's and this potential relocation to Las Vegas, the next step of the process is also easily the biggest and most important aspect. And that is an owner's vote across Major League Baseball to either approve or deny the relocation application by the A's. We don't even know when this vote would take place. My best educated guess is probably around the early days of December. The A's have said that they don't even have a final design or a cost estimate, and they won't have that until about November. So as they go through that selection process and then the winter meetings happen, nothing will happen, by the way, following the 15th of December or so. Like People like their holidays. They want to go celebrate. So I think it's about a 45-day window from the beginning of November to about mid-December of potentially, if they can get everything together, when owners might actually vote on this. But what are they voting on? What are the factors of Major League Baseball's vote? Now, I don't have... All the answers here, all the angles, but this is my best guess. These are all the things that will be considered as part of an A's relocation application. Number one is public financials. $380 million already committed by the state of Nevada and Clark County due to the special session and SB1. Now, it's pretty clear how that's all spelled out. The A's agree with the stadium authority to get the wheels in motion, and it's it's pretty laid out in, in terms of how that public money would be delivered. What's not clear right now is if there are actually legitimate challenges or not to that public funding. Could it potentially go away? Could it also just potentially be delayed? What is the actual scenario of this public money, which we know is imperative to the A's project? They said during the legislative session, that if they didn't get this money, they would have to. They would have no other choice but to turn their focus even somewhere else than Las Vegas. So we know it's important. It has been declared. Again, there are some things that could permanently or temporarily stand in its way. And and don't get me wrong. I think owners see that $380 million as a huge benefit to them voting yes. The question is, what happens if it doesn't come? How else are you prepared? There's also the private financials here, a ballpark that at the bare minimum, I think, to the A's would cost about $1.1 billion. You know, when you add in the other uh, $400 approximately from the state and county, that gets it to about the one5 projected mark. But what happens with cost overruns, of which the, the A's have said they'll take responsibility for? And maybe there's an expansion of the ownership group, a partial sale or shares And will they actually, through this move, will they increase the payroll? Right now, the lowest payroll team for players, will that change as part of this process? So there's a lot of questions here, and and none of this. I mean, the, the public financials were very public. They were part of a legislative session. They were out there for everybody to see and argue. But this aspect is one that only the ownership of the A's and owners across baseball would be privy to. But, you know, this is a large consideration of the process. How exactly to assure that this stuff is all good and taken care of? And if there's a a hiccup here or a a speed bump there, how can they be sure that if they vote yes on this, that there are ways to take care of things that might pop up? The relocation fee being waived or not. This is a huge one. Now, some would say, but hasn't baseball never charged a relocation fee? That's true, because it only became a thing, I guess, maybe in the 80s or 90s. But when Montreal moved to Washington, D.C., that was a totally different scenario and situation, including baseball having to jump in as part of the process. There was no relocation fee in that one because of extenuating circumstances. In this case... There's not really a reason to not enforce the relocation fee. And owners after, you know, the pandemic and TV deals and and things that they want, they always want money. But I feel like they especially need all the money they can get. Why do I say that? Because the relocation fee is split up between all of the other teams. They get to share that amount. I don't know if it's 300 million, 400 million, 500 million. I guess they can choose, but... Just because a a fee has never been enforced doesn't mean it's never existed 
in practicality. Is there a good reason to waive this? I, I don't know. And then what, what's the precedent if you do waive this? What's the precedent moving forward? That they'll, there will never be an expansion fee? Because honestly, at that point, if Cleveland wants to move, if Kansas City wants to move, if Tampa wants to move, and you don't charge the A's, are, are you going to charge anybody else to ever relocate or is it a free-for-all? How about the temporary seasons? Which doesn't maybe sound like a big deal. Oh, if they'll figure that out. It's just some sandwiches. But no, that's three full seasons at least. And what happens if the ballpark, because of the Tropicana construction or Bally's Part 2, whatever they'll call it, what if it takes them into 2029? Now we're talking four seasons, but hypothetically, let's just leave it at three. 25, 26, and 27. What are the city options? Outdoors in Las Vegas at the Aviator Stadium? I know that was pitched, but I know that MLBPA has a say, and I have a feeling they're not really into the 109 degree temperature on getaway day games that they'll have to play down there. Or the turf field that would be required at Las Vegas ballpark in Summerlin, by the way, to have both a minor league team and a major league team occupying that stadium at the very same time. So there's, there's more than Las Vegas, though. What about Sacramento? What about Reno? I think it only seats six or 7,000 up there. Plus, it's just not the infrastructure is not there. Would the A's ever share Oracle Park with the Giants in San Francisco? Would they make that an option or not? How would ticket prices for the Giants go? Certainly, you wouldn't want fans getting into their beautiful ballpark on the cheap just to go watch the A's, and it would take away from Giants ticket sales. They want that experience to be theirs and theirs only. So what are even the options? Like, this is a big deal. And you might get stuck in this for more than three years. What's the backup plan here? What are the options? What's a good one? I've yet to hear a good one. It's not like Las Vegas has an existing older, you know, major league ready park that Washington, D.C. had with RFK Stadium. In fact, I was actually out there in 2005 when it was very temporary, but at least it was big enough. It was in the city they were moving to. You didn't have to worry about a roof or not. It was fine for the time being. You can put up with things for the time being. But I, three years, it's hard to even call three years temporary. That's not three weeks or three months. That's three full seasons. Some players will play for the A's for two years or even all three of those years. And if they're moving, never play in Oakland and never play in Las Vegas. They'll play in that, that intermediate portion. Uh, and by the way, I know a lot of you are saying, well, could the temporary years be at the Coliseum? <laughs> That's going to be a conversation to be had. Ooh, big time. I don't know how that'll go. I don't know how Oakland or Alameda County or the Joint Powers Authority, I don't know how they will approach that with the A's, extending the lease or the contract through those years, if in fact, Las Vegas has been approved. The aspect of a doable timeline or not. Now, Again, 2028 is the target, but what if it takes longer? And sometimes that happens, or it could be right on target. My only question as a part of this, and I think this would need to be asked, if you know you're building this stadium in tandem with like a two or three tower high-rise project on 36 acres of the Tropicana site, does the Tropicana build-out immediately impact or affect what you're trying to do with the stadium or not? Are they separate? Can you do one without the other? Is one going to impede on the other? And they'll find a lot of this stuff out, I think, in November once the 75% concept design comes out. But up to this point, I'm sure some people on the very inside know, but none of this is public. And I think this is a question that somebody at the ownership level of Major League Baseball would like to know about. You know, the A's, if they go to Las Vegas, they, they've had a lot of criticism. And they've also talked about this before, being, in a, being a small market team in Oakland. Even though Oakland is part of Northern California and the Bay Area in the bigger picture, they would be moving to literally the smallest market all by themselves in Las Vegas. Las Vegas would be Major League Baseball's smallest market by a significant amount. What about the media rights deals that they would have in Las Vegas? And you know what? I am not I'm not jumping into these weeds too deep because this is also part of my business, who I work for, what I do. I'm just going to leave this on surface level. But for broadcast or television or radio or whatever they do and whatever the future brings, streaming or whatever, 
the media rights deals you get in a bigger market, I'll keep it simple and obvious, the value of those is much bigger than what you'd get in market number 40, which is Las Vegas. So sustainability is a question. The revenue that you used to get that you would probably not be getting anymore and leaving a top 10 market, is that something that an owner across the league wants to hear that one of our teams and the success of this league is moving away from a top 10 market to go to a number 40 market? Throw in tourism, I don't care. You're talking about the base group of fans who live and work there. It's an interesting aspect to consider. Uh, Revenue sharing, which has been the hustle in all of this, right? Like the A's are pushing this. They're trying to get this through because if they don't have a deal struck by, what, the first two weeks of January 2024, they're off revenue sharing. Revenue sharing, even if it continues for the A's, it still ends after 2025. They need a stadium deal to continue revenue sharing for two final years. That's going to benefit them by a total of $50 million between 24 and 25. Now, this is what the A's want. Do all the other owners in the league, do they want to reward the A's by letting them move without an expansion fee so that they can stay on revenue sharing? That I'm not voting. I'm just pitching that as something that's on the table for them. Next one here is to maybe uh, start the spending. And I said before, to change the operation of the franchise. Now, the A's payroll-wise, $100 million into this season below average. The average is $160 million payroll per team this season in 2023. A's were about at $60 million. So does Las Vegas change that? Does the marketing and revenue and sponsorships, does all of that change how they operate? Are other owners across the league dissatisfied with the way that the A's operate, spending among the fewest dollars possible and potential every year. I mean, they win games still. Can't deny that. But are the other owners thinking that a change of scenery changes the payroll? And how about actually using some of that revenue sharing money to actually be a competitive team across the board? Remember, baseball owners, they want the other teams to be successful. The value of their team is dictated a little bit by the success of the league. Right. So to think that, you know, the Padres owner doesn't want the Mariners owners to be successful. That's not true. They all want each other to lift each other up and raise the value of their teams. If you move a team from Oakland to Las Vegas, the A's, do you eliminate expansion for a very lucrative market like Las Vegas? And we just heard in the NBA that there's an ownership group. They would love to pay for a brand new arena with private money. They'll pay the expansion fee to the NBA. They have so much money. They're loaded. Las Vegas is their target. If you move Oakland to Las Vegas, you've just taken away what might be an enticing market. Again, I said before, it's a small market. It absolutely is. But to somebody out there to think that they wouldn't have the idea of expansion in Las Vegas, they would. I've got a different video out there, by the way, that details how baseball could be successful in Las Vegas. It largely deals with an expansion team at a different site. Check it out later, but I digress. Are you losing an easy $2 billion uh, expansion fee if you relocate instead of expand in Las Vegas? Or are you creating a situation where you feel like it's the right thing to do by expanding in Oakland And maybe because you didn't do a relocation fee to Las Vegas, that maybe you expand to Oakland, but then don't capture the expansion fee there. Like that, this is all craziness to me. But it's the slippery slope of how exactly does one thing lead to the next and what are the decisions that are made here? Is this the best you can do in Las Vegas? You only get one chance at this. Is this the right team? Is this the best location? Is this the best possible venue that they'll build? You don't get to tear down the Tropicana ballpark, site ballpark in 10 years and be like, well, this one didn't work. We're actually going to go build at the Rio where we should have done the entire time. You get one swing at this and that's it. So my point in that is I think owners are, will be critical of like, is this, if you're, if you're enticed by Las Vegas and this is absolutely what you want to do, is this how you're going to do it? Let me phrase it like this. What's your dream car? 
Do you have something in mind? Just think, whatever. Okay. What if I told you that you could have that that dream car, but it's going to be uh, like doo-doo brown color, right? Maybe not your favorite, right? Just, just something that, yeah, you love the car, but oh, that's not... You only get one chance to get the car and the color you want. Is this it? Like for Las Vegas, if you want to go there, is this the absolute best path to do it? Because you could say no, even if you love Las Vegas as an idea. But if these elements don't fit the master plan, to my point, you get one swing at this, so you got to get it right. So a lot of different factors there. I might be missing some. You can let me know in the comment section below. Did I miss one? Did I not get one fully right? But those are all the things I can think of that are on the table of at least conversation and evaluation that owners uh, would be considering for potential relocation by the A's. Uh, thumbs up down below. That'll help me in this video out. I mean, you made it here all the way to the very end. You know, I appreciate that. Also subscribe to this channel. Don't forget that. So I can definitely see you back here next time.